Welcome to another edition of Believe in Chargers uh, with the incredible, indomitable spirit of Lorenzo Neal. Matt Money Smith here, a three, four time All Pro, uh, whatever the number is. It's impressive. The uh, multiple Pro Bowls, the all decade team. Uh, Chargers legend, Lorenzo Neal. And I saw, I wish I could remember who posted it low, but someone had posted a video, said, Name a greater duo. I'll wait. And it was a video of you uh, with a lead block on a on a play outside, um, right side, it's a stretch, and Lowe's behind you. I think you were playing the Giants. Giants. And yes, oh. and you cleaned out a corner and did not break kept stride. Going. stride. Yes, and kept going, got and picked up another block. Oh, yeah. that play. I, it's, it's crazy. That was an awesome play. I remember yeah. you, you're, money. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I would totally so, remember that play. We do. Stretch it's play. funny because they, they post the play. And when I say like Lorenzo Neal did not, he did not break stride. This is a 205 pound, 250. I don't know how big the corner was. 195 to 215, whatever size corner it was. Literally did not break stride. You drove him into the ground. Low gets the corner. You keep working downfield. And Justin Tuck, who just one of the most incredibly athletic defensive linemen the world has ever known, ends up chasing Ladanian down from the backside. And so all the comments in the tweet kind of point out, yeah, hey, Lowe was impressive. But watching Justin, and then I don't know who it was, but it was one of the linemen got into the chat and was like, hey, not taking anything away from Justin. It's incredible, but that was my bad. And we were up like, he, he said, we're up like 14 points at that point. It was maybe two minutes left in the game. And I could have cleaned him out blind slot, bl blind side, but I didn't feel like being an a-hole and I just kind of let it go. <laughs> and that's the only reason he ended up, I don't remember which old lineman it would be, but he was like, wait a minute now. I could have cleaned that dude out, but I, I took the high road and I made sure that, that I didn't just kind of do something that was pretty mean considering the, 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 the current state of the game. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, he actually ran Ladanian down. That that was LT said he didn't know where he came from because he's gone. He's going to score. He's going to run yeah. that touchdown. Justin Tuck comes from nowhere and runs him down, passes me up, and keep going. I'm like, oh, we're scoring right now. And dude, Justin Tuck, that was an amazing play. That was yeah. an amazing play. But go, I, I should have, I, darn it, I should have bookmarked it. Um, but it just popped up when I was at work and I was ah. kind of busy. So, I, but I was like, oh yeah, look at that. Look at Lowe just cleaning a corner out and does literally did not even break stride. Dude gets dusted into the turf and you keep lead blocking down the right sideline. It was probably about a 40 yard gain, I would guess. Uh, but incredible by Tuck. I, so, you know what? Let's quickly, I want to point out Bet Online, our partner. We love Bet Online. It's your number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB, golf, NBA, NHL playoff stats, all the latest stats. They get you news, scores, follow your favorite teams, get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. So hit up the website today, Bet Online, or use your mobile device. They got the, that thing going to to get in on the action. It is Bet Online, where the game starts. I want to stick with some uh, some old stuff here, Lo, if you don't mind, oh, don't mind. to get us started. Because one of the things that that came out of the draft is the you know, selection of Joe Alt, and a lot of people saying, "Well, you know, Trey was okay. Trey was pretty good at right tackle. You know, you have other, you know, kind of issues on the team. Was that really the the best place to invest your your number five pick at a, at a position?" where you already had someone that, that you felt okay about, just gave him an extension. And then Jim Harbaugh talked about, well, look, we're just going to play the best five. We're going to play the best five. And, and he said, and Trey is one of the best five. So now we talk about Trey kicking in from tackle to guard, uh, likely the right guard. Jamari Sawyer had an okay year last year, and he can be your swing, your backup. We know Zion's going to be the left guard. We know Slater's going to be the left tackle. Alt's going to be the right tackle. Um, but maybe if you could just speak to that as someone that knows – the physicality of every snap and, and what goes into a tackle versus a guard. And, and I'm going to get to something else that, that you're going to weigh in on, but I want you to start there. Just kind of the difference of kicking in from tackle to guard and what's going to be asked of Trey. And if he can pull this thing off. Yeah, I think it's great. When you think about Harbaugh, the way that he's trying to build his team, it's not necessarily about what position guys play. It's about what guy can best suit the team that we can play at a higher and more efficient level. And that's what he's done. He said, let me identify the weakness. And yeah, if I have a tackle, if I have a, a linebacker that should be playing inside instead of outside, if I have a corner that should be playing safety instead of corner, I'm going to make that happen. But if he's a better safety, then I'm going to move and I've got a better corner than, than the corner. Then I'm going to bring in the better corner and move him back to safety. I'm going to play the best guys 
for my team that gives me the best opportunity to win. And that's what Harbaugh is doing. A guy named Chris Dillman, you knew him very well. Yeah. Chris Dillman comes to the Chargers, you know, from the University of Indiana. He's as a defensive lineman. And it's a guy, you know, playing defense. And all of a sudden on OTAs and at scout team and doing training camp, defensive guys, sometimes they go play offense. So he goes on the scout team and he's playing guard. Oh, my God, a star was born, a Pro yeah. Bowl guy, a mean guy, a tough guy. So coaches can see that. And that you, 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 you look at Marty Schottenheimer and says, wow, here's a guy that identified that. Me and LT were at practice, and we're watching this guy go against the ones. And me and Marty, we were watching. We said, dude, he's a good guard. And Marty said, like, yeah, <laughs> we're looking and watching a guy develop. So I've seen this happen. And so all, all Harbaugh Harbs is saying is, like, look, I'm going to pay the best five. Yeah, we went and got Joe Art and Alt, and he's going to have to play. We know he's a first rounder. This guy's big; he can play. And maybe he's not as good now, but you play guys like that because you know the potential, and you know he's going to get, he's going to catch up. He's busy, he's big enough. He's more physical enough. He has those attributes. And now it's like, okay, you throw him out there, kick kick in kick into guard. We can still have a better team, and it's going to be more efficient. So I think it's a great move by Harbaugh saying we're just going to be better as a team. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Chris Dillman going from D-line to O-line, and that happens, you know, quite a bit. Um, but how about this? How about somebody you played with? Because I was, I was thinking, you know, I was talking to somebody, and they brought this up, and I was like, that's right. Um, now, you weren't on the team, and I think, uh, I don't remember if Fluker was drafted in 12 or 13, but you were on the team when Jeremy Clary showed up and yes. ends up playing tackle, right? Yep. And shows up at the back half of that year and kind of here's a, I think it was a six round pick and Clary, yeah. there, there, I see your eyes light up. So go ahead, take us through that. And what you remember about Clary stepping into that starting lineup and what it did for your old line. It, it was amazing. You have a guy that you don't think anything of you. The guy's not even playing. You don't even, he's, he's an afterthought. All of a sudden guys go down. He steps up and starts playing well. And another guy is when you're talking about that team, uh, rest in peace, Shane Olivier. Yeah. You remember Shane Olivier, short arms, played guard, kicked out the tackle. This was a was he was he even drafted? Remember Shane Olivier? I don't think up, so. I think he was undrafted. Free agent. Undrafted and end up starting at tackle and getting a huge twenty five million dollar extension contract because he ended up starting at tackle. So you're you're right, money. This happens in the National Football League. So I bring up Clary because he ends up playing right tackle, kicks ass. And you guys end up going on a run. That's the year that you went all the way to the uh, AFC Championship game. Uh, was the year that he came in halfway through that season to lock down that side. Um, they draft DJ Fluker in twelve or thirteen, and and here's a guy now who's been playing tackle for a half decade and doing a pretty darn good job at it. And they're like, you know what, Fluker's a tackle, but Clara, we think you can play guard. And he kicks inside, and he is. That's does does not miss a step and ends up being a, a really good. Now he retired, I think, the following year. He was at the end of it, you know, it was 2013. So he retired the very the next year, but he kicked in and he was a really good guard. And I think the one thing that that kind of comes up is people tell, oh, is it is it do you have to be, you know, kind of know what's coming? Is it stunts? Is it all the games that are played inside? And and then, you know, I I I kind of asked that question and the one thing that came up was no dude you just got to be about that action like you gotta you gotta be willing to just <laughs> take that punch man every step the, the difference between guard and tackle is every snap you're gonna get hit and you got to be yeah. willing that's that's the big that's the biggest jump right right guard is more you got to tackle you're playing more finesse you have to be able to be athletic and boom jump back no guys are going to speed rush you at times they're going to bull you at times but it's not necessarily physical unless you're running like you're saying okay we're running the ball we're coming man on man hat on hat when you're inside and you're playing the, the three that playing at that tackle that guard position in the center position you usually got a guy over your head and he's like trying to push the pal back he's going to hit you he's going to bull rush you. he's going to pop you with his helmet it's physical it's all about that action you're absolutely 1000 percent right when you're talking about those three guys guard center and guard those three guys and well they are getting hit and it's about the action tackle is more finesse you got to make sure you kick get the right set it's more of a technique technician position tackle compared to the guard that you got to be just man you got to be able to sit be heavy and be have some lead in the butt because you know guys are going to be trying to push you back Right. And that's ultimately what it'll come down to with Trey. And you heard what, you know, what coach Devlin had to say about him, that he's smart, 
that he, he's willing, uh, that he's tough. And that's ultimately what it's going to come down to is the toughness coming from, like you said, more of, I mean, it's crazy to think that you would call a tackle a finesse position, but in terms of no. the line, I know, I know what you're saying, right? Like in terms of the sure. line, it's you're used to maybe backing up a little bit more, especially the way that they've played the last couple of years and, and the lack of, of attention to running the ball. And they are going to be pushing forward a lot more this year, but and they're smaller guys. Much, that, yeah, in defensive in defensive ends, you know it. I mean, sometimes it's linebackers. You know, it's guys two sixty, two seventy. You right. very rarely see a fast guy playing outside. You know, defensive end. I mean, you look at even Bosa. These guys are not three hundred pounds, two seventy right. or two fifty, two six. I mean, you talking about elite pass rushers. Yeah. So these guys, they're they're not necessarily physical. They're athletic. And they're quick and they want to beat you with speed and get you up field and then get you up field and get you leaning and they want to swim your by. It's all tech. So it's a little nuances at that tackle position. You're playing high. And that's what's going to be interesting with Joe because he's six, eight. If a speed guy comes and all of a sudden he's a little bit out of bounds, it doesn't take much to move a tree once it starts moving one way and it starts tilting. It's just being slap him by head shake, do certain things. So it's going to be interesting to see how a guy six, eight can be up high, and all of a sudden he's got to go from high to low right away when he knows that they're getting ready to make that move. So I think the tackle position is very, very skillful position, and that's why they get paid the big bucks. Yeah, and that was one of the things about Alt coming out is that that was so remarkable, that here's a guy with these long levers, with this height, the ability to carry all this weight, and yet his ability to drop is unlike anything that you've seen and that's what made him that elite prospect and that's kind of what they had said about Latham as well and why Latham was being talked about in that number five slot as the right tackle just because here's this mammoth human being who's six foot you know I think Latham's six six Joe Alt's nearly six nine but both of them are able yeah. to get low very comfortably um despite how big they are and how long their levers are and that's kind of what led to both of them being taken five and then Latham at seven by the Titans. Um, but I, and then just to kind of put a button on it, looking up, I just pulled up Jeremy's, uh, he's six foot six. And so that's the thing, like, like you said, when you think about guards, you don't necessarily think about these really tall guys, but it worked for Clary. Clary, he was six, six, three twenty, basically the exact same measurables as Trey. So he was able to do it and to do it successfully. So I think for people that are just kind of going, eh, really Trey guard, is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, it's worked before. And, It'll come down to whether or not he's comfortable with guys that are an extra anywhere from 50 to 70 pounds <laughs> hitting them yeah. every single snap. That's what you got to get. That's what you got to get your head around. And, and that's going to be interesting to see how Trey handles it, you know, and, and what Harbs and see what the offensive line, what are they going to do in its scheme? So, okay, if you're going to have a three technique to his side, okay, you can't necessarily have a double team. You're saying, okay, if the center's uncovered, how many times are you going to do a trade block where him and the guard in the center is going to double team a guy on certain run position? But then if you have a guard, a guy over this no, the over the center and a guy, now it's a man blocking. So they're going to try, and the teams are going to try to see how Trey handles that. But it's about leverage, and it's also about technique. If you got good feet and you're playing that guard and you know that you want to get to the outside, it's like, bam, I, it's about getting your feet down quick, too. The guy can be able to take the blunt of it. So, bam, if he gets that right foot in the ground, he understands he's going to get turned, and he's going to turn his body real quick, and now he's giving him a side to let him beat. And once you know it, it's just inertia. When you're going up field and boom, now you're getting pushed by the hole. There's so many different nuances and so right. technique right. that you can play at that guard position. And, you know, for so it's going to be interesting just to see how Trey is able to evolve and play games on that. You know, they act like I'm leading with that outside foot. Okay, the guard, the three technique, he's taught to fight to get his head across when he sees that guard step with his left leg, and all of a sudden he knows he thinks the ball's going that way, so now he's going to over-pursue to get his head across because he knows the ball's going left. You use that to use that against his leverage, and now, boom. So it's going to be so many little nuances. I've seen the guard oh, yeah. position. So many guys play with that technique and so many, and just like the illusions, that the, the cat and mouse game. So he's going to be fine, I think. Well, and you are no stranger to uh, to how important pass pro is and and what it means to to be a back out there and have a responsibility to put your hat on somebody's hat. I want to share this. Our friend Jim Nagy, who runs the Senior Bowl uh, yeah. today, the day we're doing this, posted a review of all the Senior Bowl rookies that the Chargers drafted. So he, he tweeted out, if you want to follow him, it's at Jim Nagy, N-A-G-Y underscore S-B for Senior Bowl. And I'm going to start with Kamani Vidal who was picked in the sixth round, the running back. 
And uh, he wrote, anyone who follows us knows how we feel about Vidal. A-plus character. Expect ex-Ravens, Dobbins, and Edwards to be the one-two punch to start the season, but Vidal to have a significant role by year's end. The best pass pro running back in the 2024 class. Could help wow. immediately on sub downs. Uh, and then he put a siren up there for fantasy owners that here's someone who can also take it to the house if he gets touches. But that's, you know it, though. Like, that's how you get on the field as a rookie. You better be good in pass pro, especially if you're going to be the third down back. If the hammers are going to be, you know, Gus Edwards and, and J.K. Dobbins, and you're the guy that's coming out as that that third down back, you better be good in pass pro. And according to Nagy, he was the best pass pro back they had at the Senior Bowl. Oh, yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's great when you hear Nagy say something like that. But let's go back in time. Let's talk about the arguably one of the greatest top three running backs that ever played this game in LaDainian Thompson. Yeah. He always knew how to put his hat in the right place. It's hat in hands. Here's a guy who was less, you know, 205, 210, whatever he was, you know, dripping wet. And he ran. You never got to hit him hard. You never seen him take a big shot. Wouldn't necessarily run over guys because he's, a, he's so elusive. But watch him in pass pro. He would go up and stone guys, understanding the technique, how to be such a technician. That's why he was a three down. They say, yeah, he's a every down back. He can block. He can run. He could catch. And that's great. When you have ratings like that, that you know that you have a third down back that can all, not just run great routes, but they can stick his nose in there and be able to take on a linebacker, be able to take on a safety or corner and do it with the, do it with efficiency. Those are hard to come by. Yeah, I'll tell you, when you, when you, you know, and obviously it's impossible to have a, a definitive answer, but when you talk about the greatest running back of all time, you know, the people that that plant their flag in the D Ladanian Tomlinson, Walter Payton camps point out, like, hey, I don't know if there was a better pass pro running back than Walter Payton, you know, and this was a dude that was not that big, but you want to talk about someone that liked to mix it up, that wanted to bring the heat <laughs> to dudes that were 30, 40 pounds heavier than him. And that's Ladanian as well. I mean, those dudes brought it. They didn't just kind of try to chip a guy and slow him down. They were interested in stoning them and putting them on their backs. It's absolutely nasty. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. All right, here we go. Let's get a couple more. Uh, we'll start with second rounder Lad McConkey, our second highest graded senior bowl wide receiver behind Roma Dunze last summer. Fast, savvy, dependable, wins at all three levels, undressed some good corners in Mobile, has a legit chance to be Justin Herbert's go-to guy as a rookie. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Whoa. So we'll take that. And that's, and I think that's something that we talked about when he was drafted is measurables are great. 40 times are great route running. That's what it's all about. That's where you're going to be able to get your, you know, to earn your keep on the field. If you're able to make yourself available because you've run the entire route tree, you know how to break routes off, you know how to set guys up, and you know how to make yourself available for easy completions to your quarterback. And that was something that was said about McConkie coming in. Yeah, and when you have a guy, when you have those type of ratings, and you know when people talk about it, but then when you actually watch him run these routes, and you watch him create the separation, and you see that it looks like they're running step for step with him, and you're like, oh, God, they got him covered. And you watch the little nuance where he just pushes. He leans into the DB, and all of a sudden, boom, he just created a separation. Those right. are those things right. that you look at, and Herbert is going to find him. When you have a guy like that that can run deceptive routes, it, it's kind of like you get the great, you know, Keenan McCardell. A guy wasn't necessarily fast, wasn't going to leave you, but he you knew that he was going to separate and be able to be in a position that even, okay, running you're with him, but at the end, it's like, dude, is that dude that fast? How was he <laughs> able to separate and create that type right. of space? Because they are students of the game and they're great route runners. Henry Eller was one of those guys, old school guys, the route running was just unbelievable. And that's what you got. And that's what the Chargers need because you did lose a guy. Keenan's no longer in that building. Yeah, and that's where he very well might end up kind of replacing a lot of that production, certainly. I think that's that he's going to be a big third down guy, that he's going to be a big sort of set yourself up, make yourself available, whatever. Just you can't go broke taking a profit, right? It might not be a 25-yard bomb. It's six yards, though, and now we're in second and four, and the playbook is wide open for us, something like that. But it also comes down to the construction of the wide receiver room, and that changed a little bit. This week, uh, you know, with all the available free agents, um, something that we had discussed, the I thought the best one, and I'm not just saying this because, and I said it, I'm on record as saying it, was DJ Chark. Just the way, what they needed and and what they have not had in years past. You know, Chark, the best way to describe Chark is just think of Brian Thomas this year and how excited people were about Brian Thomas Jr. coming out of LSU this year. Like that essentially was DJ Chark six years ago. Now injuries, of course, have led to his not sticking with 
the Jaguars and, and not sticking on after signing a free agent deal with the Lions and all that. But this is six foot three. This is a four three three guy at the combine. Uh, this is someone who I think had a 40 plus vert, had a 10 six plus broad. So you're talking about an explosive athlete that's six three. Uh, he's going to be the X. He's playing the X and he can get off press and he can get downfield. And every single quarterback that he has played with now in his career has not had the arm strength anywhere near the arm strength of Justin Herbert. You know, last year it was Bryce Young. Year before that, it was Jared Goff. Year before that, you know, and then the couple years before that, it was Gardner Minshew. Nothing against those guys, but they're not big arm guys. And this is a dude that can take the top off a of defense and, hey, throw it up there, Herbert. Let's see if you can outthrow me. I'm going to go out and get it. And that's something that we saw a little bit in his rookie season with Jalen Guyton, who kind of came on the scene, and he's got that 4-3 speed, but not like this, not not in the not of the pedigree. And and I know a lot of times your draft position carries with you your whole career, and and maybe it's it shouldn't. You should look at the six years, but this is someone who had a thousand yard season. I think he had thousand thousand eighty eight yards and eight touchdowns, maybe that year that he had that standout. And so you have it on your resume. It's something Don Mattingly. I remember said to us, we do the Dodgers on the radio station I work on. Has he lost his step money? Has and that's he, the question. Is, can is, he, is, has so he? You're, and, you're, and I don't know. And then that, and you know, and that's what, and that's what the question, right. I think the million dollar question, can this guy still stretch the field in the same right. way that you're used to seeing him? And, and right. if he can, then you have now opened up your playbook huge because of the fact now you have a guy that's going to require the safety to cheat and play over the top. And if you do that now with the tight end that you have, now you have the middle of the field can be more open because of the fact the safety's got to cheat to a side. So you can ha play with the f another half of the field that you have no safety help depending on what type of coverage. And you can do that by scheme and by alignment and by the route running. So it's going to be interesting just to, to see if the speed's there. And because, you know, you can bring, if you can, if you can take the top off the, the, the building and have a guy that can run like that, I'm telling you, it puts so much pressure on your secondary and on your safety and corner to not get beat deep. It opens up a lot, opens up a lot of the field. Yeah. And, and, you know, you got to be able to catch it, right? It's not just the speed. You got to be able to catch gotta, it. You got to be a threat. You got to gotta be able to catch, to catch it. it. Yeah, you can take the top off, but if you can't catch it and make them pay, uh, then they're not going to commit that extra resource, that safety help over the top. I mentioned Mattingly, what he had said once was, I know it's, you know, when, when a player produces in a single season, it's in there. Okay, so we know it's in there. So now it's up to us as coaches to pull it out again. And so that it, that certainly is something that you would assume the Chargers saw and said, "Yeah, we can we can make this work. This is this is something we can get back at. We can get back to that thousand eleven hundred yard eight touchdown season." Now maybe I don't know because they're bringing an MVS as we're talking. Marquez Valdez Scantling. He's another four three guy, another big guy. Yeah. Got to play X. Has some issues with his hands. You know, has some drops in there, and that's always kind of been something that's dogged him and why he was unable to stick in, in Green Bay and why he's not sticking in, in Kansas City, but also a guy that's made some huge catches and, and helped the Chiefs win those two Super Bowls um, with some big plays in, in the game's most critical moments. So what was a four-receiver room, Quentin Johnston, Josh Palmer, Simi Fajoko, and Darius Davis, is now up to 11. We now have 11 <laughs> guys with the undrafted free agents and the, two, the three receivers. So you went from four to seven with Brennan Rice, uh, Cornelius Johnson and Lad McConkey. Now you go to eight with with the, the signing of DJ Chark, and obviously you got all the other undrafted guys that have been added to the room. Leon Johnson, Jalen Johnson, um, who else is in there? I think that's yeah. So that takes you up to eleven. So yeah, wow. it was uh, Jalen wow. Green. There you go. Jalen Gill is the other one that was added. So and it might get up to twelve if if Marquez Valdez Scantling signs here really soon. What what do you think about it? Because you, you you know Kansas City, they wouldn't got this fastest guy who broke the forty time. Shout out Fresno Central High, you know you this go. kid. So it made it made you know it made certainly you know replaceable. So do you what what if you think it's possible and probable that the Chargers say, man, let's make this twelve? Let how deep would that room be? The competition, you like? I don't think who's it's more than guys? five, bro. Like I can't imagine it's more than five for a team that's going to run the ball as much as they are. I don't know how you're carrying more than five on your active roster. I can't imagine it being a six wide receiver team. I would assume it's going to be because you're going to carry a fullback and Ben Mason. You're going to carry four unless you you look at Ben Mason as a fullback tight end hybrid. And now you're only carrying three tight ends. 
you know, is that kind of how you're able to get that six wide receiver? You get Disley Hurst, you know, and you can either pull in one of Parham, Stone Smart, you know, because Mason is is sort of, you know, that hybrid. He can he can do some tight end stuff, but I, this team's going to run some thirteen. I wouldn't be surprised at all. So that's kind of where I wonder: Are you going to carry more than five receivers? And you would assume one of them's going to have to be Darius Davis because of how important returners are now. Unless you feel like you can replicate that production from Lad McConkey, if you want to put him in the you know the path of peril as a returner, I don't know if you want to do that and why you would want to walk away from the guy that the players voted as the best returner in the league last year. So I assume he's going to be one of those five. It makes it a real interesting. You go from not having much to maybe having. Wow, how do we how do we find the five? They're going to stick and and plant some guys on the practice squad that aren't going to get scooped up by other guys, right? And that's going to be very interesting because I think it's going to be the latter of the two. Like you said, you said you know you could play fullback and tight end. I think you're going to keep the, those three because you have a swing mind, swing man that can play F as well as tight end. And you almost you look at that. I think they might have to keep six because you know you drafted two. You got you know so. Are those two guys for sure? I, I, you don't know. You Rice is three, remember. So you got the two sevens. Three. And yeah, so you got Lad McConkey in the sixth. You got yeah. Brennan Rice and Cornelius Johnson in the seventh, you know. And, and here I'll give you quickly, since we got it pulled up, Jim Nagy's uh, – here, here he is on Brendan Rice. Uh, breakout season last fall, physical in-cutting route runner. Good feel getting open on Caleb Williams' scrambles. Better deep gear than his 40 times suggests. Definitely has make-it physical talent could end up being a tremendous value pick. And here's someone that was projected to go in the third or fourth round. And it, in, 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 you want to bet against Harvey. Jerry Rice's kid? <laughs> right? That's her, that's exactly where I was going. So we know two of those two, you know, you, you drafted three, two of them are going to be some type of whether practice squad. I, I just, you can't and run the third around is a Michigan guy. The, th- the third one's Ooh. a Michigan guy that helped them win a national championship and is a heck of a blocking wide receiver and and a guy that was was winning 50 50 balls downfield. So you're keeping that, six. You just answered. You're keeping six. So. You're keeping six. Oh boy, a Jim Harbaugh team carrying six wide receivers on a 53. That is. That why is, do you I, think they're bringing in? Why are they bringing in Stanley? And when you, when you think about the, yeah, I know he can fly, but you have some speed. I mean, I mean, you know, just, Quentin I, and, and Josh Palmer aren't going anywhere. DJ Shark no, is exactly. not going anywhere. So there's three. Lad McConkey is obviously on the roster. There's four. And then you get to Darius Davis, who's your returner, unless you're fine just dedicating a spot to a returner. And that's kind of how you get to six, right? So you, you keep Davis and then, but then, all right, now we're, we're it's, <laughs> and then you're just hoping hey, that, the, and if they sign, are getting, that is getting small. Them. Now look, you know, there's also the idea of, hey, training camp, you know, earn it. Go out and get it, and and we'll see. And and maybe, maybe Brennan Rice and and Cornelius Johnson outplay these vets, and they're they're development inhibitors, you know. And and they don't and they, and they don't stick on, even though you sign them in the off season. You say, no, we're we're good, we're good with the kids. Let's let's develop them, let's go. So that's that's always a possibility, uh, as well. I see you got it on your head, Lo. Uh, I was wearing it yesterday in the water because the sun was out. Love melon hats. I, I have been wearing melon hats, just speaking personally, for me, years. Uh, my wife got me one, I think, two years ago or maybe three years ago for from a birthday because I spent so much time in the water. You load up with the sunscreen, and and that's essentially their big surfer cap um, because the water does not damage them. Uh, it doesn't lose shape. They float if they fall off because you eat it and you get a little too aggressive in that wave. Uh, they are built to last five times longer than any other uh, hat. They're great hats. It's M-E-L-I-N. I cannot recommend them enough. It is antimicrobial properties. That's why it doesn't break down. And as someone who sweats a lot, you get that little salt rim when you oh. wear it. And you know it, low because where you live, uh, Look you know at that. How I, got, I, I got that big, I got that big melon and this thing go. just fits on my, it makes my head even look Great. smaller. I mean, I love these melon and, and I got the melon and these hats are absolutely amazing. And you I'm telling you, money, one. like you said, the sweat, when I get, when I start sweating and I hate it, now they look at that little white sweat line and in your hat and you're like, oh God. And people are like, oh, look at that hat. It looks just so grimy. These do not. And I sweat all the time. We're looking pretty, hey, me and you, hey, we're looking pretty good. Man. We're looking pretty I good, baby. Head. I got a pebble head. So <laughs> understand my head is small. This is a great cap. I love it so much. Uh, I was just wearing it in the water yesterday uh, because the sun looks was good. Out. It looks good on you too, money. It looks good on I you. You don't bad. You look good on it. Love them. Uh, comfort, fit, 
they're comfortable as all get out. Um, cannot recommend them enough. They got snapbacks. I think you're wearing a snapback right now because I have that same hat low as well. This is the uh, little strap for guys that have small heads like I do. Um, that fits really well. And again, cannot recommend them enough. And right now, this is the big deal, folks. 30% off. These hats never go on sale. Uh, 30% off is a big deal uh, because they are a premium item. So you're going to pay a premium price for something that is constructed this well and is going to last you longer than any hat you've ever owned. But right now, they're big Charger fans. Uh, they're local guys and they're big Charger fans. And that's why we're doing it. So hit up Melon, M-E-L-I-N dot com slash Chargers. That's M-E-L-I-N dot com slash Chargers. And you're going to get 30% off. And that is a big deal because these things do not go on sale. So we're stoked that they uh, they want to be part of the pod, that they love the pod, they love the bolts. The code's going to expire in 30 days. So give them a look. Uh, they get huge thumbs up for both of us. And we're proud to be partnered with them. It's a fun one. I enjoyed it today, Lo. Uh, despite the fact the draft is over, there was only one free agent signing. Now, next week, we're going to get the schedule. It's coming out Wednesday night. So one week from today, 5 p.m., I believe, Pacific time, we'll get the schedule released. So maybe we do this thing bright and early Thursday morning so we can react or Wednesday night or something. We'll figure it out to uh, to kind of get into are we going to Germany? Are we getting, you know, are we opening on Thursday night against the Chiefs on NBC to kick off the season? Uh, do we have a bunch of money? Are we playing on Christmas? Are we playing on Thanksgiving? There are so many things that'll be interesting considering, you know, it was only a five win team last year. Uh, rarely do you get a lot of primetime games coming off a five win season, but you got, got, Justin, you got Harbaugh and <laughs> Herbert. You got the two H's. You, you got a superstar quarterback and a superstar coach. And those things tend to go a long way. Absolutely. Maybe, man, maybe next week or the week after to let the fans know that I'm going to be I'm going to be questioning you money about which teams in the AFC West who had the better draft, who yeah. won, who yeah. lost. And we'll get around the NFL with that, too. I think that fans want to know what, who our competitors and our foes are going to be as well. Yeah. And we're still we're still in free agency, man. Like you yep. said, it's DJ Chark added, you know, former second rounder four three guy uh, who's got a thousand yard season on his resume was just added in the last few days. So they're still signing guys. They're still going to continue to sign guys. Appreciate you all uh, for listening, downloading, liking, commenting, all those things, the YouTube video. If you want to watch it in video form, if you're listening to this on a podcast, all that stuff is available to you. And uh, can't thank you enough for all the support. We'll be back again next week for Believe in Chargers.